I have been stitching bacon and wallowing in my stash, and I have a whole bunch of stuff to tell you. Morning Flosstube, I'm Michelle. This is my Romantic Tangle. It is Saturday, August 7th, 2021, and it's been a while since my last official Flosstube update. A lot has happened. There have also been a lot of little standalone videos, so if you're watching the channel, you know a lot of what has happened. My Riolis order came. I ordered these on March something of this year. They got hung up in a shipping container in Russia. And as of today, the United States Postal Service still tells me they are in transit to the next facility. They turned up in my post office box on July 21st and I was supposed to sign for them, but there was nobody at the post office and I was not going to stick around and come back later and argue with them. So they got lost by the postal services in two different countries. I really think that package was jinxed, but I got them and I started stitching Riolis lunch because for some reason that I do not fully understand, I really need to stitch bacon. Isn't I, I just, I don't have words for it. This is not the sort of thing I use, usually stitch. It's cheerful and happy and a little ridiculous and has a ton of back stitching. I started a little of it here and then realized I needed like three stitches up here in a totally different color to continue the back stitching. So the thread's parked over there and I'm finishing the piece of bread and the bacon and I will loop back and back stitch. And I am just having spectacular fun with this. Here's what it's supposed to look like when it's done. I I just, I can't explain it. And it's cross-stitch. We don't always have to explain the choices that we make. I also have breakfast, and I think if I've given myself permission, if I finish breakfast and lunch, I will go back and order dinner, and no, breakfast is not here in my stack of stuff. Oh, it is. That's breakfast. I love these. I don't know why I love these as much as I do, but they're fun. And compared to everything else I'm working on, it is small. This is stitching up amazingly quickly, even though there's a lot of fiddly detail. I pulled out, while I was wallowing in stash while my husband was camping, I pulled out all of my dimensions kits because I've done videos on what I love about Riolis and I've done videos on what I love about, or what I don't love about design works and what I love about vintage kits. And I realized I've never done one about dimensions. So I did a dimensions video. And after looking at all my kits, I realized I really should tr pull out European Bistro and work on that because I have got some stuff. I want to finish it. I want to stitch it. And I need to actually sit down and do it if I want those things to be finished. Just look, 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 look. I worked on the room back here behind the arch and this is way easier than I thought it would be. Most of this is half stitches with lots and lots of strands of thread, but I am kind of giddy. I'm giddy about a lot of things right now, so I pulled this out and worked on it, and that has been all my stitching since the last floss tube update. We went to the coast for a week, and I thought I was going to take my stitching, and I almost did a packing video because we were taking all three boys in our new-to-us compact SUV. Space was a challenge, and more than usual, I was trying to figure out how many projects I could cram into a tiny bag. I didn't do the video because I did one last year, and I should have done the video because if I had done the video in advance, I would have realized that some of the things I needed to pack weren't where I thought they were, and finding that out two hours before we left the house wasn't the best thing. But that's okay because I did a lot of knitting. I did not do any stitching. I was doing other things. I was reading thrillers on Kindle Unlimited and other things that were also lots of fun. On the way out of town, we stopped at an amazing estate sale. He collected antique radios. Antique radios make my heart go pity pat. Being in a pole barn with probably a thousand antique radios does things to me. There will be a video. In the kitchen, there was very little in the house that was 
not radios or not man stuff. Which was interesting because the widow was in the kitchen during the sale, so I assume she had cleared all her own stuff out. I also heard that this was the fifth sale they had had. I don't know how I missed the first four. Hanging on the kitchen window, they had calendar tea towels. These were getting harder to find. And they were $5 each. And these are never been used. They are perfect. But for $5 each, I told myself I could go back to the booth at the antique mall that sells tea towels. And for that price, I could get exactly what I wanted. And we went back to the sale the next day and things were half off. And for $2.50, these were kind of a no-brainer. Look at the colors. This one is from 1977. It says, bless this house, O Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. I love, I love houses. You know I love houses. You know I love trees. And the colors. The other one is this one. And again, the colors and the kitchen stuff and the painted teapot and utensil dish and just all the perfection here. This one is 1969. I'm going to cut them up. I'm going to make project bags. I got a tutorial for how I did that. I am going, it, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to figure how to lose as little of the design as possible, but I figure making these into project bags will extend their lifespan a whole lot longer than if I use them in my kitchen. I used to pick up tea towels at estate sales and use them in my kitchen. And, you know, I shouldn't feel guilty about buying a 50 cent or dollar tea towel and using it up in my kitchen, but I kind of do. And someday I'm going to figure out where the remains of those are. And those are going to be project bags too, probably with a lot of embellishments to hide the holes. What else am I doing? I went to Joanne's because I wanted to see if they had the Halloween just cross stitch issue, and they did. And I stood there in the aisle and I looked through it and I kind of hemmed and hawed about whether I wanted to buy it because I'm past the point where I automatically buy every single issue. There. But then I saw the Hollow Kitty Surprise by the Witchy Stitcher. And this right here justified the $10 purchase price. And then I got home and I looked through the whole magazine. How did I miss Woeful Wreath? Just how? I need to stitch this. I need this in my life this year. It is by Shauna Grierson of Bobbin and Fred. I am not familiar with Bobbin and Fred, but I totally, as soon as I'm done filming this while it's transferring from the camera to the computer I'm gonna go look them up and see if they have other things I can't live without because I love this and one of the best parts it's only five and three quarters by five and three quarters it's 80 by 80 stitches so I could do this this year and have it done for Halloween and I'm thinking I have black but I'm thinking back to last year and that sleepy hollow piece I did where I hand dyed the Ada, and it was that wonderful dark gloomy blue and I think I need to see I saved the dye in a jar and I've heard that dye doesn't go bad and how wrong can I go on a piece of fabric for a five a six by six inch project thanks for watching I'm Michelle this is my romantic tangle and I've got a whole bunch of videos lined up for you for the upcoming future and more I'm going to film later today so I'll see you soon